Nine on two, uh, first thing. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, Katie, are we go to Zoom and Panda for uh, giving you a good block Bravo here? Affirmative, Alex. Thank you, and work. Cygnus uh, continues uh, a slow and methodical approach up the radial vector. Uh, there you can see uh, some of the strobe lights on the cargo craft, within which uh, housed 3,300 pounds of uh, supplies, spare parts, and science experiments uh, that will be unloaded by the crew over the next uh, several days. Cygnus uh, scheduled to remain at the International Space Station until August 15th. There will be one more hold point uh, coming up uh, at about uh, 10 minutes after 5 central time. That will be the 30 meter hold point arrival, uh, putting uh, Cygnus just 98 feet away from the International Space Station for a final series of systems checks uh, by the Cygnus uh, flight control team in Dulles, Virginia. We're ready for Brock Bravo. The vehicle is all set up for Block Bravo in camera view 9. Uh, however, in camera 3, uh, we are the, with the actual vehicle with the off-flight tracking light, about one vehicle with support of the outline. Houston, copy. That's an acceptable offset, and we'll expect it to converge on the way up the R-bar. Station copy, and we'll keep an eye on that. Alexander Gerst uh, reporting uh, the alignment uh, that he is seeing from the uh, hardware control panel in the cupola. Uh, he uh, in a position right next to, uh, to Steve Swanson, the Expedition 40 commander, who will be uh, maneuvering the Canadarm2 uh, for a grapple of Cygnus uh, just about uh, 50 minutes from now. That hardware control panel not only uh, containing uh, the equipment uh, to enable the crew to hold uh, the approach of Cygnus should a problem occur and also abort its approach, but it also provides uh, that graphic overlay uh, with uh, the camera view of the spacecraft as it uh, will grow larger in the field of view in the minutes ahead. Flight controllers here in Mission Control uh, reporting uh, that uh, the Cygnus spacecraft's uh, approach inside the narrow corridor towards uh, the grapple position uh, is converging very nicely. Uh, all of Cygnus's systems uh, and its uh, relative positioning systems are functioning perfectly as it uh, moves very slowly and very uh, methodically up the radial vector towards the grapple position. No delta. All is good. 
Copy. Good word. Thanks.
Houston Station on two for Block Bravo. Go ahead, Alex. We are all centered up in camera three and camera nine. Copy. Mark is smiling down here. That's good news. We're two minutes from a short handover. This is Mission Control Houston, as you can see in this uh, view of the hardware control panel in uh, the cupola of the International Space Station, the same view that uh, Alex Gerst is reporting, uh, the European Space Agency flight engineer who is uh, serving as the backup uh, to Steve Swanson, the Expedition 40 commander, uh, who is at the controls of the Canadarm2, the uh, station's robotic arm that uh, will be used a short time from now to reach out and grapple the Cygnus cargo craft uh, following its two and a half day journey from the launch pad at the Wallops Flight facility in Virginia. You can see Cygnus uh, as it uh, continues its uh, inexorable approach uh, towards the grapple point. Uh, it is moving uh, right now to a range of about 100 meters or 328 feet away from the station. You can see the strobe lights on Cygnus as we speak. Everything continuing to go very smoothly with this approach as uh, the station and Cygnus move from southwest to northeast, 260 miles above the Earth uh, on an orbit uh, that will approach uh, the Gulf of California and the west uh, coast of Mexico. A short short time from now. As uh, mentioned earlier, once uh, Cygnus is grappled by Swanson uh, and we have a uh, tight grasp and a firm hold on the spacecraft, uh, Swanson uh, will hand off robotic operations to Melanie Miller, the robotics officer here in Mission Control, uh, who you see on the far right of your uh, screen. Uh, Miller, a veteran uh, robotics officer, uh, will be sending commands uh, from her console here in Mission Control to maneuver Cygnus into the installation position with its uh, common birthing mechanism, which is the so-called passive common birthing mechanism, uh, eventually aligned precisely uh, with a, a companion active common birthing mechanism that resides on the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. Once uh, the Cygnus is in uh, the RTL's ready uh, position, or the ready-to-latch position, as the acronym uh, stands for. Uh, then uh, Reed Wiseman uh, aboard the International Space Station operating from a laptop computer will be sending commands to uh, bolt uh, Cygnus into place uh, as uh, he sends commands to four gangs of four bolts apiece, 16 bolts in all, that will uh, firmly uh, mate uh, the Cygnus cargo craft to Harmony. Uh, later in the day, uh, Swanson is scheduled uh, to outfit uh, the small passageway or vestibule between the hatchway to Cygnus and the Harmony module itself with jumper cables and other equipment. He will dismantle uh, what is known as a centerlined berthing camera system uh, and the uh, uh, centerline uh, berthing uh, common berthing mechanism control boxes uh, that. Uh, are outfitted uh, around the circumference of the uh, hatchway uh, to the Cygnus spacecraft. Those uh, common berthing mechanism controller boxes are the uh, boxes that control uh, the bolting uh, commanding uh, to uh, the Cygnus as it uh, is moved into the installation position. All of that work is preparatory to the opening of the hatch to Cygnus, which at the moment is scheduled for Thursday morning, but we'll see uh, how the uh, timeline develops throughout the course of the day. The crews have typically run ahead of schedule, and uh, if they are in the mood and eager enough and with the approval of the flight control team in Houston, could elect uh, to open the hatch to Cygnus uh, by the end of the day today instead of waiting until tomorrow morning. We'll have to just wait and see how the day develops.
Station then two for Block Bravo. Go ahead. All centered up in camera views uh, three and niner. Copy all, Alex. Thanks. Cygnus's orientation as it moves up uh, the approach corridor to the grapple point uh, is uh, precisely aligned according uh, to the visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control, and all of its uh, navigation systems are operating normally. We're inside uh, 36 minutes until the expected capture time of 5.39 a.m. Central Time, 6.39 a.m. Eastern Time. This view from external cameras on the International Space Station uh, showing the strobe lights on the Cygnus craft. Everything uh, continuing to proceed uh, as planned per the timeline. All of uh, Cygnus's uh, engine firings uh, have been perfectly normal and all of the spacecraft systems have uh, operated in flawless fashion uh, since uh, the Cygnus uh, was launched atop an Orbital Sciences Antares rocket uh, from Pad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport at the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia on Sunday afternoon. We're about uh, three and a half minutes away from entering an orbital sunrise uh, for Cygnus and the International Space Station. The uh, two craft uh, moving uh, from southwest and northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, approaching uh, the southern uh, coastline of Baja, California and the west coast of Mexico. Cygnus uh, just 40 meters away from the International Space Station, some 110 feet. Bolts of lightning uh, 260 miles below the uh, Cygnus cargo craft and the International Space Station. Now passing over Baja, California.
Cygnus now just uh, 35 meters away from the International Space Station. Just over 100 feet separating uh, Cygnus from its destination. It uh, will put the brakes on at 30 meters or 98 feet away. That uh, final hold point coming up in a couple of minutes. Cygnus uh, and the International Space Station uh, crossing the uh, border between uh, Mexico and West Texas. The two craft uh, will pass directly over Odessa and Midland just a few moments from now. And Cygnus now has reached its final hold position 30 meters or 98 feet away from the International Space Station. A good view of the Cygnus spacecraft two and a half days following its launch from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. Go ahead. Hey, it wasn't us that turned on the lights. Uh, we're ready for step six and one one oh two to confirm the thirty meter hold and the setup for SSRMS for capture. Step six and one one oh two in work. Good view of Expedition 40 Commander Steve Swanson, uh, joined uh, on his left by European Space Agency flight engineer Alexander Gerst in the cupola of the International Space Station as uh, the craft approaches an orbital sunrise. Currently uh, flying over uh, northern Texas, about to cross uh, into the border uh, with Oklahoma. Looks like a good hold. Cygnus rock steady at 30 meters or 98 feet away from the International Space Station. A final go no go poll will be taken uh, both here in Mission Control in Houston as well as at uh, the Cygnus uh, Orbital Sciences Flight uh, Control Center in Dulles, Virginia. A few minutes from now, uh, the go no go for final departure and final approach inside 30 meters. This view of the uh, Cygnus spacecraft through the uh, high-definition external view camera or the HDEV camera uh, on the International Space Station, a spectacular view of uh, the orbital sciences craft in high definition. Cygnus uh, saying, uh, is orbiting passively right now. Uh, inside 100 feet away from the International Space Station, about to receive approval uh, for the reinitiation of its final approach for grapple.
An orbital sunrise uh, illuminating the view of the Cygnus cargo craft from external cameras on the International Space Station as the two craft fly uh, just to the north of Peoria, Illinois. That was a view of Swanson and Gerst uh, in the cupola, checking out uh, the same view that you're taking a look at, uh, the uh, hardware control panel's uh, alignment view of the Cygnus craft. To make sure it is uh, properly centered uh, in the field of view. Uh, this will assist uh, Swanson uh, as he extends uh, the Canadarm2 robotic arm, uh, the 58-foot-long robotic arm uh, over the final uh, few feet uh, for the grapple of Cygnus that is scheduled at 5.39 a.m. Central Time. Cygnus and the International Space Station early on a Wednesday morning flying uh, just to the north of Midland, Michigan, passing over the Great Lakes. On this pass that will take uh, the two craft uh, over Canada to the northwest of the capital of Ottawa. Back inside the cupola, Swanson and Gerst uh, reviewing their checklists one final time uh, before uh, Cygnus uh, reinitiates its final approach from the 30 meter hold point. Houston Station on two, crew ready for Cygnus approach to capture point. Houston copies. Station Houston, Cygnus is ready to approach from the capture point. Expect departure shortly. Station copy. All the flight control teams in uh, concert. Uh, all systems are go. Cygnus about to reinitiate final approach for grapple. Cygnus on the move once again, beginning uh, its final leg of a two and a half day journey to reach the International Space Station. Cygnus has begun the approach from 30 meters. We'll take step seven in 1102. You are primed to send retreat if the primary range is less than six meters. How copy? 
Station copies, we're prime if uh, range is less than six meters, and we're in step seven, one dot one oh two. And Houston Station on two for Block Bravo. Go ahead, Alex. Everything is centered up in camera view three and nine. Copy centered up in three and nine, and we see Reed there as well. Flight engineer Reed Wiseman now joining his crewmates inside the cupola. Sorry, Sasha. <laughs> That's right. Russian cosmonaut uh, Alexander Skvortsov also uh, has uh, joined uh, the photographic fray inside uh, the cupola, uh, snapping imagery of uh, the cargo craft's final approach for grapple that is uh, scheduled just uh, inside 20 minutes from now. This uh, scintillating view of Cygnus, uh, courtesy of the HDEV camera on the International Space Station, the high-definition external view camera that is providing uh, crystal clear imagery as uh, Cygnus and the International Space Station pass uh, just uh, over the northern tip of Newfoundland. Here in Mission Control, uh, the robotics officer, Melanie Miller, will be sending uh, commands to the Canadarm2 robotic arm, uh, priming it, if you will, uh, with its uh, final set of instructions uh, so that Steve Swanson uh, will be in a position to uh, manipulate the arm and reach out and grapple Cygnus at the appropriate time. Cygnus uh, will reach that capture point arrival uh, just about 30 feet away from the International Space Station at the bottom of the hour. Thanks, Katie. Uh, we see that, and uh, we'll look at the prime range. Good copy.
We're about uh, three and a half minutes away from uh, capture point arrival at a distance of just 30 feet. A final go, no go for capture then uh, will be uh, confirmed by the flight control team here in Houston, led by flight director Emily Nelson and the Cygnus flight control team at the Orbital Sciences headquarters in Dulles, Virginia. Houston Station on 2, all is centered up for Block Bravo. Houston copies. We're uh, handing over uh, communications chores uh, between satellites and the tracking and data relay satellite system. Uh, we'll reacquire that signal moments from now. In the meantime, uh, until we reacquire our, t our television signal uh, from the International Space Station, you can see the graphic portrayal through the uh, robotics uh, officer's console of uh, the relative position uh, between the Canadarm2 and uh, the Cygnus cargo craft uh, that is moving uh, to a point uh, within 30 feet of the International Space Station for its grapple. And we're back now with live television from the station. The two craft are passing over the North Atlantic. This view now from a camera on the end effector of the Canadarm2. Cygnus now has reached uh, the capture point. A good view uh, of the engine on the cargo craft uh, that has faithfully executed uh, all of the rendezvous burns uh, to fine tune its uh, path over the past two and a half days following its launch uh, from the Wallops flight facility in Virginia. At uh, Dulles, Virginia, in the Orbital Sciences Flight Control Room, the mission director is uh, polling his team to get a go for capture. Uh, a similar poll will be uh, taken momentarily by the flight control team here in Houston. Station Houston, Cygnus is confirmed at the capture point. We'd like your step eight in 1102 to confirm CP hold. Step eight in 1102 in work.
Alexander Gerst on the right. Station Commander Steve Swanson on the left. Swanson uh, about to take control of the robotic arm. He'll be uh, maneuvering the arm slowly toward the grapple fixture on uh, the uh, aft end of the Cygnus spacecraft a short time from now. Standing by for your go. The Cygnus team at uh, Dulles, Virginia is go for capture as uh, Cygnus and the International Space Station approach the northern coast of Spain. Houston, go for Cygnus capture sequence. That's step four in 1.110, the Cygnus approach and monitoring capture, and begin monitoring back away cue card. Station copies all, we're go for capture. Steve Swanson, uh, the Expedition 40 commander on the left of your screen in the cupola, joined by European Space Agency flight engineer Alexander Gerst, uh, now sending uh, commands uh, to slowly move uh, the Canadarm2 and its uh, end effector uh, toward uh, the grapple fixture on the aft end of the Cygnus cargo craft that is uh, sitting very, very steadily, just uh, about 30 feet away in the grapple uh, position, uh, with grapple expected in the next few minutes. And you can see uh, very clearly uh, just below the engine uh, on the uh, aft end of Cygnus, uh, there's the grapple fixture. Uh, and that's the uh, target for the uh, Canadarm 2's uh, end effector that will uh, reach uh, over the grapple fixture itself, over the pin, and then snares will be initiated uh, to uh, form a hard uh, grasp and a tight grasp on that grapple fixture. Uh, the snares uh, then will engage uh, and uh, Cygnus will be in the, uh, in the grasp of the Canadarm 2 to complete this rendezvous. The International Space Station now has been placed in free drift. Uh, all thrusters uh, on the International Space Station disabled uh, to prevent uh, any perturbations uh, to the attitude of the station relative uh, to the Cygnus cargo craft during uh, the final moments of uh, the maneuvering of the Canadarm2 in for grapple. Cygnus and the station uh, passing over northern Africa, 260 miles below. Canadarm2 now moving in for grapple.
Once again, uh, this view from the end effector on the uh, Canadarm2. A very clear view of the grapple fixture just underneath the, the thruster engine on the Cygnus cargo craft. Just a few feet separating uh, the Canadarm2 from its grapple point. The robotics officer reports a good alignment between the end effector and the grapple pin on the Cygnus cargo craft about to be captured. Flight controllers standing by for the grapple and capture of the Cygnus. And effector is over the pin. Grapple confirmed. Cygnus is captured at 5.36 a.m. Central Time as the International Space Station flew 260 miles over northern Libya. Eastern Station M2, we now have a seventh crew member. Janice Boss is now part of Expedition 40. Janice devoted her life to space and accomplished many wonderful things at NASA and orbital sciences, including five shuttle missions. And today, Janice's legacy in space continues. Welcome aboard the ISS, Janice. 20, that was great. Great capture, we see a good capture, uh, good latching. Janice was a friend, a colleague, and, uh, and a crewmate to many of us, and her history epitomizes what it's like to be part of the team that explores the universe. She worked for Orbital, she flew in space, and then she shepherded an, an observatory. I mean, whether you're NASA or one of the commercial partners, it's actually all the same. We're all about exploration. So thanks a lot, and it's great to see Cygnus on board and Janice as well. Thanks, Houston. I'd like to say thanks to the whole orbital VV team and robo team, please. Great job today. Thank you very much for all the help. We will pass that along. I think everybody's breathing again. <laughs> and it was really nice. We had a great view of the cupola. It felt like we were up there with you. And uh, it was uh, just uh, perfectly smooth, so thanks. This is Mission Control Houston with Cygnus and a firm grasp of the Canadarm2. Uh, congratulatory words uh, first expressed by Expedition 40 Commander Steve Swanson from the cupola of the station where uh, he was responsible for maneuvering the Canadarm2 in for grapple at 5.36 a.m. Central Time, 6.36 a.m. Eastern Time as uh, Cygnus and the International Space Station flew 260 miles over northern Libya. Swanson uh, paid tribute uh, to uh, former astronaut Janice Voss, who died in uh, February of 
2012 at the age of 55. Uh, Voss uh, flew five shuttle missions uh, before becoming an astronaut. Uh, she worked at the Orbital Sciences Corporation supporting mission integration and flight operations for the transfer orbit stage that propelled the Advanced Communications Technology Satellite uh, to geosynchronous orbit after its launch aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery on the STS-51 mission in September 1993. Uh, that uh, mission, ironically, commanded by former astronaut Frank Culbertson, who is now the executive vice president and general manager of Orbital's Advanced Programs Group. A nice tribute to Janice Voss, also echoed here in Mission Control uh, by spacecraft communicator Katie Coleman. Inside uh, the uh, cupola of the International Space Station, Russian cosmonauts Oleg Artemyev on the left, Alexander Skvortsov uh, just uh, ducking out of the field of view, uh, coming up for a bird's eye view of the action. Uh, just a few minutes uh, following the on station grapple of the uh, Cygnus cargo craft at uh, 5.36 a.m. Central Time, completing a uh, textbook two-and-a-half-day rendezvous by Cygnus following its launch atop uh, the Orbital Sciences Antares rocket on Sunday afternoon from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. A great view of uh, the Cygnus uh, craft in the firm grasp of Canadarm2 with uh, grapple occurring at uh, 5.36 a.m. Central Time 
6.36 a.m. Eastern Time. The two spacecraft now flying 260 statute miles over Kenya, moving from uh, northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. The uh, rendezvous was uh, by the book, no issues whatsoever. The grapple occurring just a couple of minutes ahead of schedule. Uh, and with Cygnus now in the grasp of Canadarm2, uh, the robotics function uh, will be transferred from the crew over to the robotics officer here in Mission Control, Melanie Miller, who shortly will begin a, a very slow uh, and methodical process to maneuver Cygnus into an installation position uh, along the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. With that, we'll wrap up our grapple fixture and take a break. We'll be back on the air at 7.30 a.m. Central Time, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time for berthing coverage of Cygnus to Harmony with the berthing process and its bolting in place scheduled to begin around 7.45 a.m. Central 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time. So we'll see you in a short uh, time. Cygnus successfully grappled by the International Space Station's crew. For now, this is Mission Control Houston.